when letting go, the last thing you want to do is engage the mind. You don't want to engage the mind. It happens on a felt sensation level. So when I'm personally letting go, what people try to do is they try to guide themselves or think themselves into it, and that's terrible. I want to quiet my mind, not even worry about thinking. So this is why I do guided meditations, guided releases. And it sounds obnoxious, but I will listen to these exact same ones myself. No extra ones, literally just what's in the mentoring, and I will listen to my voice guide me through it for that reason. Okay, so whatever it is you do, like when you are letting go, disengage the mind completely. Okay, now for everyone here too, if you do want a free meditation um, that you can start with, just go to, and you can write this down and go to it after on your computer or whatnot, go to transformationmastery.com and you'll see a quick redirect and it'll redirect you to a free meditation that you can get. Okay, so after this event, if this resonates with you, go get that free meditation. It's a very basic one, but just get that one. Try it out with what I'm telling you here. So when you listen to it, disengage the mind. Next thing, mindfulness versus concentration. Classic meditation is you wanna concentrate on the now, right? Or concentrate on a mantra. And you want to basically concentrate enough that all your worries or stress or whatnot kind of fades away. And that's an amazing first step. But the approach here is very different. Remember what we talked about before. There's the movement towards or the movement away from. What's concentration? Oh, I don't feel too good. Let me focus on the now. And I'm gonna keep focusing until I forget about all this, right? Like if all of you focus right now, right here, on my f focus on my finger. If you keep looking long enough, do you see the rest of the room? No, that's concentration based. And what happens is, for most people, they realize this, it just becomes this temporary escape from their problems. They concentrate for 10 minutes, that's their meditation, and then they stop and they're back in the ship. Okay, uh, better than nothing, but here's what's better. Instead of concentrating on say the now or a mantra or a spot on the wall to avoid your problems, what about focusing on your problems, letting go of them so there's nothing to focus on to escape? That's mindfulness. So instead of now, mantra, we focus on the stuff we're trying to avoid. And it's the same approach with getting triggered. The stuff we don't experience, that's where you gotta go. The things you're running away from, that's where you gotta go. That's mindfulness, okay? Now, the way you're gonna do it, and again, transformationmastery.com, get the free meditation, is seated position, okay? I like doing it like this, don't cross your legs, both feet planted. You wanna to communicate to yourself that you're really grounded and you can handle whatever you experience, whatever comes up. I also like the palms face down, okay? Just very grounded, and when I do it, eyes closed. Okay, so when you do it later, eyes closed, why? Because you don't wanna get sucked into the external, you want all your awareness internally, okay? As I guide you through it, you're gonna do are gonna trigger different feelings within. And your job once more is let me sink into it, let me experience it, and let me breathe my way through it. When there's charge, when there's stuff that comes up, you've got to notice to yourself, am I stuffing it down or clenching or relaxing in? Okay? And then you'll see me guide you through it with the tactical things. But those are some key mindsets so you do it the right way. Now, one other thing, when you're going through it, it's very common that people are like, oh, you know, uh, you, you were talking about this, but my mind drifted off and I'm thinking about this now. That's fine. Your job is whatever you're thinking about, your mantra is, <laughs> we're talking about mantras, you're, remind yourself of this, what are the sensations? If I'm talking about some other topic and you think of this and you're triggered by it, great, what are the sensations? What are the sensations? And here's another one, sometimes people are like, I don't feel anything, here's the question. What does that feel like? What does not feeling anything feel like? You can't not feel anything or you'd be dead. Your body would be cold, right? So, oh, what am I not feeling? Or if there's frustration, okay, what does that frustration feel like? Tune into that. And once more, you release the charge. And the way to think of this too is, imagine there's all like these strings like attached to you, or these like cords, they're all pulling your, your strings, you're pulled in different directions. What's letting go? Severing that. And this is important. In life, there is such a thing as a physical connection, but then there's, not to get a little too hippy-dippy, an energetic connection. So here's an example. 
Say you go through an experience as a kid where you experience trauma, right? Maybe in class, like I said, you speak up and the classroom laughs. Then you live your life and you move on. Physically, that event happened a long time ago, very distant. But energetically, there's still the link. It's still running you. That's something you want to sever. The same with different fears that run people. A key thing when letting go is sinking into those fears, getting triggered by it, and freeing yourself from that energetic link. So a common one is people are really afraid of, say, being alone. Right? There's a few core fears. One is fear of being alone. And I'm just I'm curious here, I'll ask you which one you resonate with the most. Fear of being alone, fear of not being good enough, right? Not having what it takes, fear of not living up to your potential, fear of being bad and toxic. Fear of being alone. Who resonates more with that one? Raise your hand. The fear of forever being alone. Cool. Surprising, right? Based on people working on their social skills. <laughs> You'd think a lot more would be afraid of being alone. Or what are you doing here? Fear of not being good enough. Something wrong with you, not having what it takes. Fear of not living up to your potential. Fear of being bad, toxic. Yep. Okay. Now, those are just a few, but we all have these, you could say, more universal fears. And then there's, depending on our conditioning, as we discuss, more specific ones. Now, here's my advice, right? What people try to do is they're like, oh, there's these fears. How do I overcome it? What I tell clients, like say someone's like really scared of being alone and there's the craving of say having a partner. It's like, I can't be alone, I need a partner, I need someone, I need someone. I would actually have them sink into it. Okay, what if you never get a partner? What if that's true? What if you are alone the rest of your life? And just sinking into that, you're gonna start feeling, oh, the triggerness kick in. Whatever it is your fear here, right? Like, what if you never live up to your potential? What if that's it? What if you see other people go after your dreams but not you? What if you don't have what it takes? What if there is actually something wrong with you? You're not strong enough, you're not smart enough, you don't have it, and you'll just never truly succeed. What if that's true? Sinking into that, you're gonna feel something perhaps getting poked at. That's one of those energetic links. And then by triggering it and letting go of it, you free yourself. Now that doesn't mean now that you're gonna go in that direction. That's what we think, if I let go of the fear, won't I go there? No, no, no. Your intention is still, for example, to succeed, to, be, to meet a partner, whatnot, but now it's coming from a, I'm playing to win, this is what I want, versus in reaction to the opposite. So it's severing those links. Another key link that runs people comes to, down to forgiveness, right? Where, this is the classic story I like sharing to illustrate this. Maybe you've heard this one before. Um, I had a client a few years ago. Uh, he moved from Los Angeles to Ukraine, right? He was doing movies and stuff. He was in his 40s. And uh, he was still really triggered and resentful towards his parents, but more specifically his mom. Okay, why? Because as a kid, he wanted to do music, be creative, um, but his parents were very traditional. It's like, look, you're gonna be a lawyer, you're gonna be a doctor, you're gonna be very serious, none of this music stuff, right? And I think he had siblings who, they followed that, they did well, and he's kind of like the odd one out trying to do, you know, movies, creative, movies, not music, uh, movies on the more creative side. And, uh, it got so bad that he's like, you know what, I'm moving across the world. Moved to Ukraine, and he's doing some movie projects there, yet, physically, far away. He still feels the same pressure and self-sabotage and even feels guilty, even though he's far away, why? Because although he's physically away, there's still the energetic connection that he has to let go of. Same with the past. Different events, people, right, things that, you know, might have happened to you, things people did or didn't do, they did you wrong, so on and so forth. People tend to like physically distance themselves, but until you let go, that event or that person will still have that energetic control over you. And not just other people, but yourself. Younger versions of you that might have not done better, not done what it takes, so on and so forth. Oh, I'm growing up now. There's still the link. And for that there, on the more resentful, uh, so on and so forth, it's forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. So think about it. That person, say someone really did you wrong. Can you forgive them 100%? Guaranteed, probably a little bit of triggered, and what are those sensations saying? Fuck no! That's where you're gonna to wanna to start processing. Until it's a yes, and it's not a you making yourself say yes, it's an authentic yes, you're being pimped out. There's still the energetic connection. Now here's the thing, key subtlety with forgiveness. Forgiving someone or something does not mean approving of it, 
does not mean, say someone did you wrong, there shouldn't be consequences. It doesn't mean now you have to be friends with them. Forgiveness is a 100% act for who? You and only you. It has nothing to do with them. Forgiveness is whatever impact they still have on you, releasing that. And you will sense, key, you will sense when you've truly severed one of those links that's just, or chains even, energetic chain you could say, you'll sense you've severed it when you look say back at that event or that person or that fear and it's just information. The charge behind it is gone. And that's another great audit. Where in my life is there some charge? And that's what letting go is. is instead of stuffing it down, it's like, let's be with it and let's start releasing this charge, right? If I ask you, what did you eat for breakfast? Do you get triggered? No, right? It's like, oh, I just ate this. It's information. That's what happens around things that run you. What do you think about that person? Oh yeah, they did me wrong. That was not cool. But there's not the charge behind it. Oh, what about that fear? Oh yeah, I don't really want to be alone. I want to, you know, be with someone or so on and so forth. I want to live up to my potential, but it's no longer <gasps> the same charge that runs you. Do this, you start being free. I'm sure you've heard the saying, if you don't have a plan for yourself, someone else has a plan for you, right? And we always tend to think, oh, it's, I guess, the government, people, that, like, yeah. But you know who really has a plan for you? All of those things you've suppressed, past trauma. Pull in your strings. You're in that little invisible prison. That has a plan for you until you address it. If there's that little voice that's talking you down, right? You're not good enough, you're gonna suck, that it's not you. Until you let go of it, you will also have to place a firm boundary and not allow it to take over. This is the level of grief, right? For those of you who joined, you're gonna learn all about this, but think of it like this. Grief, victimhood, excuses, it's this force that just pulls you towards inaction. You feel it. You wanna go home and just kinda of lie down and not do anything. And that mind's like, look, see how hard it is for you, da 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 It's this very sorry for yourself. And people in this state will let that voice fucking run them. They become the voice. And everything that they say is very disempowering. Audit how you talk, by the way, and talk about yourself. Oh, you know, I would, but it's so hard, I can't. Stuff like that, very disempowering. And it's convinced them that they are this pathetic little slug. If you've ever seen Lord of the Rings, ever seen number two, uh, was it, I forget, there's, a, there's number two, I give this example in the mentoring all the time. There's this king, there's this old king, and there's this assistant, this little worm tongue, two towers, thank you, thank you, yeah, the two towers. And there's this little assistant, like worm tongue, I think that's the name, and he's just whispering shit in his ear, like, yeah, I did it like that. And literally when they see this king at first, he's just like rotting. It's like old, like mold, just terrible. And like this little worm tongue totally talked this king into just this pathetic existence. Now guess what? In the movie, they put a boundary and he kicks finally this fucking worm tongue out. And suddenly you see the king like look alive again. The life force kicks in, looks 30 years younger. You're like, who's that? This is what happens to us. Not just us, but society. We buy in once more to all those lies. We clam up. We stifle ourselves, we learn helpless, so powerless, right? Even people in self-help, like, coach, do it for me because I'm so powerless, battery. That's where you gotta learn, so simple. But no joke, write this down, the put your fucking foot down technique. When that voice kicks in, hey, you said, uh, nope, foot down. And you're gonna have to start saying fuck you to that voice. A hard no and a fuck you enough. You're gonna have to reclaim your power. This is part of taking responsibility again. It's nope, hey, it sucks, it's hard for you. Nope, it's not gonna work for you. Nope, boundary. You might think it's harsh, but this is actually an act of self-love. Letting yourself be abused by that voice, that's not self-love. It's foot down boundary. And while you do that, so you're finally freeing yourself, like Ugh! the leech is off, then it's what well, we talked about, not what now, but why, and let go. But until you put that boundary, you won't be able to let go of it. So it's boundary, let go. So just start auditing your life and no joke. If you're in grief, foot down, foot down, foot down. Like this program is such a game changer. The way everything's structured and the material, it's been already even for me, it's just been, I'm noticing a crazy change in, in the way that my whole life's like playing out. What you put together is just incredible. There's nothing like that. I'm just jumped like a million levels. It's just been a complete 180 for my experience of existing as
awesome. <laughs> it's just been so huge in terms of so many of the things I'm finally understanding and realizing and epiphanies I'm having. What you do is a huge inspiration to me and I think it's one of the most beautiful things you can give to another human in this entire world. You saved my in life, man. I'm telling you, that's, this is real, man. Sometimes all it takes is just one person who believes in you. Find people who are where you are in life and model them, work with them. I would not be here if I didn't have people who held me accountable. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt a click and things are changing. This program was just top notch. Seriously, like this is a masterpiece. This is, this is perfect. Everything, the way it's set up, the live calls, like all the support from the coaches is incredible. It's, it's been nuts. I just have my taste of joy. This was the best decisions I ever made. Thank you for creating something wonderful like this. This program was phenomenal. This program was uh, was amazing. This program has definitely changed my life. I know for a fact I'm in the right place. This is exactly what I was expecting from the program. It's been uh, spectacular. I feel really lucky to, to have found you. Thank you so much, Julian. It's, uh, it's worth every dollar.